Welcome to chapter five in the notes on the invertibility of matrices. Um, so in this video, we're just going to introduce the notion and we'll develop it further in the coming sections. So the goal of this introduction is to define canceling out in the context of matrix algebra and to learn how and under what conditions we can do so. So if you think back to last chapter, what we defined or we talked about matrix algebra, we defined operations on matrices, we defined how to multiply matrices, uh, we defined an identity matrix, much like the number one for real numbers. We defined zero matrices, but you might have noticed that what we didn't define was matrix division or canceling out matrix A or multiplying by one array. So we will not define any such concept, but we'll have something that comes close, which is multiplying by A inverse or the inverse of A. And we'll see that that will allow us to do some of the same things that you do with division. So. Uh, to introduce the idea, let's go back to real numbers for a second. And we know with real numbers that when we multiply a times b and get zero, if one of the two factors is not zero, then the other factor has to be zero, right? a, b equals zero. Uh, if a is not zero, then b has to be zero. We use that all the time. We use it, among other things, to solve uh, equations, right? Quadratic equations, for example. And well, why is this true? Well, it's simply because if a, b equals zero and a is not zero, then I can multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over a. So 1 over a is the reciprocal of a. Another way of uh, writing that is a to the minus 1, right? So that is the reciprocal, or we can call it the inverse of a, the multiplicative inverse of a. So a inverse times a b, a inverse times 0. And of course, a inverse times a, or 1 over a times a, is 1 times b equals 0. And that is simply b equals 0. And so that's what we mean by canceling out a or multiplying both sides by a inverse. Now this hinges on the fact that every real number, uh, every non-zero real number, has uh, what we call a reciprocal, or we can simply call it the inverse of a, right? And so we can multiply both sides by that number and cancel out. Now for matrices, this is not necessarily true. For matrices, we could have, in fact, that a b equals zero. We can have that one of the two factors is not zero, and yet that doesn't mean that the other factor has to be zero. So we saw an example of this in uh, section 4.3.2, but let's just quickly see another one. Um, so a little example of two matrices where neither of them are zero. Zero, one, zero, two, for example, is not a zero matrix. And let's say three, four, zero, zero. So neither of these matrices are zero, but their product, row times column, zero, 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 and we obtain a zero matrix, right? So we have that AB equals the zero matrix, and we have that A is not a zero matrix, and yet B, we cannot conclude that B is equal to zero. In fact, B is not equal to zero, okay? And why is this the case in this example? Well, simply because this matrix A in this example does not have an inverse. If it did, right, if A was invertible, invertible, so this is a terminology that we're going to be using in the next section, if a was invertible, i.e. if a inverse existed, and in this case it doesn't, then how would that change things? Well, a b equals zero. If a inverse did exist, we could multiply both sides by a inverse, just like we did with real numbers earlier. And in this case, a inverse times a would be the identity matrix rather than the number one. And that, of course, would simply give us B equals zero. So as you can see, in this case, if A was invertible, then we would come to the conclusion that B has to be zero. Uh, so what we're going to see in the next section is when is this the case? What matrices have an inverse? And if so, how to find it?